What's up, friends? It says it's recording. What does that even mean? Anyway, I want it to be live, so here we are. I want to share something. I'm just sitting in my bed. I have a lot of energy, although I'm also tired. Have you ever been like that? Simultaneously, you're like, whoa, I'm super energized. I just did all these things, ate all this food, but you're also sore and sweaty and all the things. I want to make a video before I go to bed. Guys, I did this 11 day training and I have to tell you, I got so pissed at my teacher and I wanted to quit because it was so triggering. But I wanna share that because I said, this reminds me of how my clients must feel, <laughs> right? So I wanna share a little bit about that. Hi, Sarah. Sarah, I know you felt it. Hi, Erica. So good to see you the other day here at the Yoga Barn, actually. Uh, hi, Ashley. Hi, Tara. Hi, Victoria. So um, so here's the deal. I finished this training, and I wanted to quit a couple times. I had to, like, channel David Goggins and think about him because it was funny. Because if you guys don't follow David Goggins, if you want to, like... I like to pay attention to many different aspects of life because... If you pay attention to all of the softness and all of the, the, the slow and the spiritual and the this and the that, you'll only notice that. Sometimes you have to tap into different things. So for me this week, I noticed that David Goggins said it was like hell week and he was like, you better hope for the worst things on hell week. And I started thinking of him because I am here at this training and I wanted to quit. Like, I don't even know. Dark spots showed up on my face. I puked twice. Um, and not from the whole Bali belly thing where people get sick. I got sick because they give you puke bags with the meditations. Like it was so intense and hi Reagan. Hi Alicia. Uh, so they give you plastic bags when you were going in the meditations. Um, and for five days we just kept digging in. It felt like we were just poking the wounds, like poking the wounds and I was just waking up and crying in my in my room. I was going into the class and we're all meditating. Nothing happened. No one said anything. And all of a sudden I start crying. And there were several people out of the like 30, 30 some people that were there that were going through this. But, you know, it, it was just I was so open. So let's say we're like day five or six. And he was like, what are you feeling? How's it going? And this is Puna, who I love and wanted to study with him. But I only knew him from doing a couple classes that were 90 minutes long on my last trip to Bali. So on this day, I was like, okay, well, here's what I'm feeling. I, I was like, I feel like this is really harsh. It feels abusive to my body at this point. Like my chest is hurting, all these things. And he was so serious. And he said, what's that word you used? He said, abusive? He was like, you think this is bad? You've seen nothing yet. <laughs> I was like, I was like, every part of me was just like, Ugh, he doesn't get it. <laughs> like, and it was just so funny because I left that like portion of the session and I was just feeling so over him. And I go like over to my room. My room is right next to where we're um, having the, the session. So it was very convenient. And I end up walking back from the break. And he was right there, and I was just like, oh, God. Um, I knew it was my shit. I'm like, this is totally my shit. Like, I'm totally projecting my shit right now. But I'm uncomfortable. And he uh, he sees me, and he just comes over and hugs me. And he's like, um, he was like, Nicole, we're holding you so that you don't break. But we're also hammering you. <laughs> and I was like, great. That's great. So point of this whole story is that... I'm so glad. Obviously, I didn't quit. I wasn't going to quit. I think if I had a few more times of throwing up, a few more times of feeling the things that I was feeling, who knows? Who knows if I would have, right? But the, you know, it's just, you'll notice the way that your mind wants to tap out. And that's the point of this video. So if you've been here for this long, the average person's mind and my mind too, you want to tap out. You're like, this is too hard. This is too uncomfortable. I don't want to be here. What's the fucking point? Maybe I should just go home. I can keep doing the things I was doing, right? 
I start questioning, why did I even come to this anyway, right? Why can't I just be a normal person that just watches TV every day and like does the same old jobs every day? You start questioning, but you get to this threshold where you realize that you're on the precipice of change and that if you keep walking, there's going to be a big shift. There's going to be a big change. So I'm sharing this because for some of you, it's you and your workout plan, it's you and your eating habits, it's you and your savings plan, it's you and the business that you're starting. Everything that I've done in my life that has been profound and, and lasting change, it has this, this feeling of why am I even doing this anyway? Like your mind will try to like get you to the point where you start questioning like your intentions, questioning why you're doing the thing, you'll want to quit, right? And I always say this to my, my clients and the people that I talk to about business. If you haven't been to the point where you wanna quit yet, you're not pushing yourself enough because there comes a point where you put so much forth, you show up with so much heart, you put yourself out there, you, you take the risk and you, it hurts, it's uncomfortable. But if you can get to the other side of that part, you will have something beautiful. So I want you to think of something, the last thing that you quit. I want you to think of the last thing you quit. And maybe there's something that you've been thinking about starting, but you feel like, I don't know if I can do it, right? Doing this class, you know, I've done a bunch of uncomfortable things in my lifetime. This class was really uncomfortable, but what it brought up for me is it helped me, it just like flipped my life upside down. I noticed, I mean, I got, a, I got a new tattoo, like all these things happen. But what I noticed was how I was looking at my time before this. Um, like I signed new clients and I changed my rates. I have a new offering, like so much change. I decided the way I wanna work with people, it's gonna be different, who I wanna work with and why I wanna work with them. So many things have changed just from being with myself. And so many people say that they don't wanna do meditation or they don't wanna do certain things. I have some people that wanted to go to Peru and she was like, I don't know if my husband's gonna like the meditating part. I'm like, meditating is just you being with you. It's you being with all the things you're afraid of and all the uncomfortable things. And um, I can't recommend it enough. So moving back into you know, I'm flying home tomorrow. It's like morning time where you guys are. I don't even know what day it is. It's like Wednesday night. I don't even know. I forget what day it is. But <laughs> all I know is I'm flying home tomorrow or flying to LA tomorrow to record my book. So guys, my book is going to be on Audible and I'm so excited to share it. And it's going to be super dramatic because I have to be like my abusive boyfriend and I have to also be, you know, like the police and I have to be like the nurse at the hospital. I have to be all the things. <laughs> so I have to really tap into my inner actress and, and play all those roles. But I'm going into the studio for two days to read that book. And then I'll be flying back to Philadelphia. Who knows what's going to happen? Maybe I'll move to LA. Maybe I won't. I'm going to see how I feel when I get back to to Pennsylvania and it's really cold. I have my winter jacket in there and I'm like, well, wow, I got to start layering back up, you know? Um, so anyway, point of this is guys, wherever you are right now, whatever you're doing, whatever you believe to be true about your life, it's limited. It's limited. It's only what you think is possible. It's only what you think you can do. It's only what you think you can have. And it's limiting, right? I was sharing this the other day that when I decided to do certain things, it just didn't make sense. But when I decided that this was going to happen, this was going to be real for me, like I deserve this or I deserve that, it becomes a reality. And it's because when we have this internal shift and this becomes a fuck yes, there's no other way this is happening, everything else moves. But part of you, part of most people, you want to still keep all the old stuff. You want to keep everything the same. You want to keep life in the safe little container of, I don't want anything to change. I don't want anything to get uncomfortable. I just want to add more love, more money, more happiness, more joy. That's not the way it works. You have to look around at your life and say, 
this doesn't feel juicy to me. This doesn't feel exciting to me. These people, I don't really feel connected to them. I got to drink wine just to have a good like time with these people. You have to look at your body and ask like, are you really honoring your body temple? Are you really feeding your things like your body what it needs? If I think back to that post I, I shared two days ago about the little baby animals, none of us really like to hurt little baby animals. But at the same time, how many people go to the store and just check out and act like the stuff that you're buying isn't contributing to that, right? The reason I bring that up is because all of this is inner integrity. It's, it's you being in integrity with your highest self. And when you are like kind of clicking yourself in, tuning yourself in, plugging yourself in to be more in integrity, more in integrity, more in integrity, things shift, right? Because you are so powerful, you're impacting not only yourself, not only your clients or coworkers, your family, you're impacting like all of us. That's how powerful we are. I want you just to think of something before I go. Because I need to A, get out of this position and go take a shower. I'm still like sweaty and everything and I just came here. And I want you to think about this. The last time you walked into a room or you were like at the mall or a restaurant and somebody walked in and you could just tell that they weren't happy. Like they were just short tempered or they just were uncomfortable or like the worst to me is when I go to a restaurant and people are serving me that are not happy about their job. Like I, ha I, I hate that because I go out to eat because I don't want to cook and clean and do all the things. And I eat out like five times a week for dinner, <laughs> I feel like. And when I eat out, I'm like, why? I want someone to be happy about this. I'm going to pay and I'm going to tip. But I want you to think about this because your mood, your state of being, it's impacting all of us. It's impacting all of us. And when you recognize that, you decide that your state of being is everything. It's so freaking important. And it's impacting how much money you make. It's impacting what happens in your body. When you're unhappy, or let's say that you have something traumatic happen, or let's just say that you're just living a uh, kind of life or a shitty relationship and it's just kind of ongoing, slow, 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 or you have worries about your business or your job, whatever, it's all kind of compounding. Your cells in your body are not in harmony, right? They're not in harmony. They're not flowing together, working together. They multiply. They multiply in that disease. So you just create illness in your body. You think like, I can just deal with this. I can just kind of numb over this. I'm going to drink more wine or I'm just going to watch more TV. I'm going to eat more ice cream. You think that you're just getting by day by day. But in the reality is that like internally, it's creating that chaos. It's creating that illness. And it just creeps up on you. So I just share all of this stuff. And I know I kind of went on a little rant about it, but you being happy is everything. You being happy is everything. So no matter what you're doing today, I want you just to check in as you're going through your day and ask, like, am I happy right now? If not, what could make me happier? What could I ditch? What could I let go of that doesn't make me happy? Maybe you're hiring a cleaning person. Maybe you're hiring someone to do your laundry. That's what I need to find because my cleaning lady now doesn't do my laundry and I, I need that. It just adds to my peace. <laughs> That's to my piece. I don't know. So if you live in Pennsylvania and you know someone, send them my way, please. Because I have not found that yet. Um, anyway, guys, I'm going to go. I need to shower. I need to sleep. But I'm sending you guys so much love. If you are a female entrepreneur, and even if you're a male entrepreneur, but I, I feel like with this stuff that I'm um, about to do with these two clients that I'm bringing in, I signed two clients while I've been here. Um, I'm bringing on two more because I want to take these technologies and, and share them into someone's life. But not only that, open up for a bigger vision. Like, how does it feel to know that no matter where you're at, what you're doing, it's smaller than what you're capable of. It's smaller than what you're capable of. And the, the chances are that you're not doing the work that you should do or having the life-changing experiences or getting the support you need, whether it's going to get massages for detox or going to get colonics or going to float or joining 
the nice gym that makes you feel excited and you actually want to go, right? All of these things that we say no to because it costs money, but like your happiness is everything. I cannot stress it enough, but if you're my kind of people, you get that. So I bought this new thing. It's a, it's like a sand eye mask and I'm going to go take a shower. I got to go get changed. Guys, I want to share one more funny thing. I'm sitting at this table. I've become so used to bugs while I'm here and I don't like bugs normally, but I'm sitting at this table having dinner and the biggest like roach looking bug crawls right up my leg so fast on my arm onto the table. And I was just like, so calm about it. <laughs> just like, I was like, I would never be that calm at home. Like what the heck? The other thing is my suitcase is over here and I made the mistake of leaving it open like I would at any normal hotel and just like pull stuff out of it when I need it. But we're in Bali where, you know, all the insects and everything are everywhere. So I go in there the other day and I'm looking for something and I see a black bug like this size go in. Like it goes deeper in the clothes and I was just like, I was like a lot of the clothes I'm wearing already are like up in this little shelf and I was just like, you know what? Before I go home, I'm going to take out every piece of clothing, shake it, and fold it. So tonight is that night, three weeks worth of clothes. I'm going to go do that and get find the bug and, and move on. <laughs> Regan says I die. I know, like, it's it's seriously, it's it's not my typical thing. And you guys, I don't think you guys have even seen. I have a little, um, that's a chair, like, swing. But up there... There's like a, oh, right there, there's glass. And this is the funny thing. You can hear monkeys at night because all you hear is like, like little paws running across and then <laughs> it's not super, super constant, but it's like the first two nights, it kind of scared me. Now I think I'm sleeping through it. So I'll be in LA tomorrow and it'll be helicopters and who knows what else happening so guys have a beautiful beautiful day thanks for listening to this uh crazy story and um i can't wait to share the audible with you guys by the way if you haven't already bought a ticket for harmonious hustle live why not i can't even sign on to my stripe i don't even know if that last ticket to vip sold out i'm thinking it sold out because we only have one left and i promoted it twice and i don't understand why anyone wouldn't want to go to the peninsula of Beverly Hills and have afternoon tea because you know that's the cool thing about life you can be in Bali one moment with like a two inch cockroach climbing up your leg and then then you can be at the Beverly Hills Peninsula having really decadent afternoon tea with like harp playing and you know all of the little sweets and all the yumminess so if you if that ticket is still for sale on the website buy it. It's going to be amazing. But beyond that, day one and day two of Harmonious Hustle, I can't wait. It's so exciting. Um, so guys, have a beautiful, beautiful day. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.